Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. Now this video is just going to be a bit more of a, a me talking at you video, but it's just going to be a quick diary letting you know about the things that I've been up to. So if you've watched my video on the structure of the course here at Warwick, first year, the preclinical year where you do most of your kind of textbook learning, is split up into five blocks. Blocks one, two, three, four and five, and that takes you right through to the summer of first year. Then after that you have a thing called AC1, which is another 10 week block, Advanced Cases 1, where you get the rest of the teaching that they couldn't fit into first year because it's a four year graduate entry program. And then in January, we came back on the 2nd of January 2019, you enter what's called CCE1, Core Clinical Education. This is basically when you start your full time clinical placements in the hospitals. I've had five weeks of CCE1, I've got another five weeks left but the first five weeks I've been spending on general surgery and after that, in fact now, I've just rotated onto trauma and orthopedics. So actually starting with surgery has been really quite nice for me because as many of you know, I think I want a career in surgery based on my experience so far. So starting with 10 weeks of surgery with plenty of chance to get into theater, talk to surgeons, start building portfolio, that's been really nice. And because I'm based at George Eliot Hospital as well in Nuneaton, instead of University Hospital Coventry, which is one of the much bigger centres. Often I think it means the staff have a bit more time to spend with you and teach you. So it's been a really nice place to find my feet and just work out how hospitals work because I had no hospital experience before coming to medical school at all. So the way it works is you get a clinical partner, that's someone you nominate. So I have a friend of mine from the year and then we were assigned to three surgeons. It does vary depending on what you're doing, but we've had one colorectal surgeon, one breast and endocrine surgeon, and then one urologist. It took me a second there. So obviously within general surgery, that's basically anything abdominal, we've had a really good range of things. And it's a big change too, because whereas first year is kind of nine to five lectures, very well structured, now that we're in CCE, we have a few things here and there we need to do like the odd workshop or clinical skills sessions. So we've done things like taking blood from patients and some compulsory teaching time with doctors on the wards. But beyond that, you're really left to your own devices to work out a timetable that works for you. You could even not come in on some days and study if you wanted. So the way we kind of do it is we make sure we're spending four days kind of doing something clinical, whether it's in GP or doing something in community or are in hospital learning. And then we've always been taking one day a week study where we can, where we just focus on hitting the presentation list. So this is basically what the presentation list looks like for each block. So we get a load of presentations we need to know, things like abnormal blood sugar, acute abdominal pain, acute central chest pain, things like that. And within those areas, what it says here, to take an adequate history and understand the differentials, know the relevant examinations and investigations and basic management. And that's the big difference between second year and first year. First year is preclinical. You don't really need to know any management. It's all about understanding normal anatomy, physiology, and a bit of pathology. Now that we've moved on to second year, it's a bit more clinical. So you have to remember all the normal anatomy and physiology and pathology that you did before, but now you're applying it to actual patients and we are expected to know a bit more of the basic management. We're, we're kind of moving a bit further towards clinical medicine. Just in terms of things we might do, day to day, uh, it would be very possible to attend a clinic, maybe in the morning. So we would often go to the urology clinics and we could see patients and examine them and see the diagnoses that way. We've done the breast clinics and um, we were able to watch a triple assessment so we could see, um, see and examine a patient that has a breast problem. So we can kind of get the feel for that. We would then see an ultrasound scan being performed. And then if the patient obviously lets us, we could see a mammogram being performed as well. So, you know, we've gone away and learned the textbook physiology and anatomy and the relevant lymph and things like that. Then we can actually see real patients with these problems. You can go and watch relevant surgeries. That's something I've noticed actually. Surgery, when you're on clinical placement, is not actually a, a really high yield way of spending your time in terms of it takes a long time for anything to happen with getting patients anesthetized and kind of set up and taken back to the wards and the next one being brought in. It's a long time 
to spend in one place. You know, if you spend three hours in a theatre, you might learn three or four facts. So what we decided we were going to do was try and see one of any relevant operations. So I've been on my general surgery block, so we've seen um, like a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which was very good. It was a bit of a difficult one. We saw that. We've seen a couple of appendicectomies. We've seen inguinal hernia repairs, just like the classic presentations that are useful to see. Exploratory laparotomy, that was really cool. And I do think it is worth doing. Um, you know, speaking as someone who is passionate about learning more about surgery, I think my take based on what we've done so far is go and try and see everything once, even if you're not particularly interested in it, just because it'll help you cement um, why the procedures are done, the relevant anatomy and the complications of the surgery as well. And most of the surgeons we've encountered have been really good, either letting us scrub in and get involved assisting or talking us through what they're doing as they're doing it. And not just the surgeons as well, but the other theatre staff, the scrub nurses, the techs, ODPs, um, the anaesthetists who are there as well, the other doctors in the theatre, just talk to the people that are there. And the anaesthetists, you know, while long bits of the operations are on, were able to tell us about their machines and talk us through the operations when the surgeons were busy. So there's really good learning opportunities around. You just have to kind of get in there and ask. That's the big thing that I've learned. I attended a couple of conferences in the last five weeks. Um, I really enjoy going to events like that. So the first one was the NUCCA, National Undergraduate Clinical Anatomy, no, Conference for Clinical Anatomy. There we go. And these two were either at King's or Imperial. I can't remember which way around they were. I'm a bit flustered at the moment, but that was all about modern teaching of anatomy and anatomy education in medical schools and the use of anatomy um, kind of in the wider world and developments in anatomical understanding. So two example talks there, there was one on the use of stereoscopic 3D projection in guided brain surgery. Um, that was really, really cool. So they kind of, you put 3D glasses on and it showed you during an operation how they could give the visual layers depth. That was really exciting. And then a week later, I went to the NANSIG, so National, no, Neurology and Neurosurgery Interest Group. That was what I went to. Um, so for sort of medical students and foundation doctors who want to be neurosurgical trainees, it was a neurosurgery careers conference. That was a great chance to learn more about how the selection process for neurosurgery works, what it's like being a consultant neurosurgeon, the life of a trainee, the things we can be doing now in medical school if we're thinking about a career in neurosurgery, things like that. I really, really recommend going to conferences. It's a good use of time, I think. As I said, we spend one day a week in general practice. Um, that can be kind of anywhere in the surrounding area. It doesn't have to be just in Coventry. And actually, I think that has been the, the place where I've had the most learning opportunities and personal development done in the last five weeks, because at least at our practice, the GPs are having us lead the consultations. Um, and I've just come back from GP today. So what might be a normal day in GP was we will spend the morning leading consultations. They'll actually book out longer slots. So we have a bit more time to go through things, but we'll talk to the patient. We'll take a history. We'll then do any relevant exams that we want to do. And now they're asking us, you know, how would you manage this patient? as well so you really because they're giving you that opportunity to thrive and to learn I think as long as you're willing to throw yourself in and really engage and get involved there's so so much to learn because if, if and this is true in general I think if the doctor can see that you're engaged and actively interested in what they have to teach you you'll really get out what you put in and you also have to know your clinical skills as well because you don't know what's going to come in the door. I guess that's the case for general practice. Um, so, you know, it might be a case of, can you listen to this child's lungs who's got a bit of a chesty cough? Or can you examine this person's knee? Or what do you think about this rash that this person has? And you've got to pay attention in your history taking as well, because it's real people now. Um, they're not just simulated patients that we have for our OSCEs. It's, it's people where the consequences of the meetings they're having with their doctors the consequences really matter. So you don't want to say something stupid in front of the patient. You, you really feel like you need to know what you're doing. 
And of course, you could be seeing a baby, you could be seeing a toddler, an elderly person, just a kind of middle-aged adult. It really could be anyone, even someone of our age. Um, and obviously, it's it's a huge thing for all these patients to let us um, let us even be in the room when they're having these consultations, let alone lead them and talk to us as if we are the doctors. Um, you know, without patients being so good um, at, at letting us interact with them in, in that kind of false but realistic feeling way, I mean, we just have to be so grateful to everyone that lets us do it. This video has already gone on a bit long and I'm just gonna say now that the other thing that's happened as part of my general surgery block is five days in maternity, but that's gonna get its own short little video. So watch out for that. Thanks very much for watching guys. If you've got any questions about how the course works, at least what I've experienced so far here at Warwick, whether it's first or second year, do let me know down below in the comments. So thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com com for lots of helpful videos and articles will help you make your way to medical school. Take care and I'll see you next time.